Previous videos discuss theory, drawings, and 3D models. At some point, the parts need to be made. This video covers making the 2-inch L bracket to see how close the real part comes to expected dimensions. It's where theory and practice come together. How close can they get and what's acceptable? Okay, we talked about K-factor, theory, bend allowance. We did a little 3D modeling, covered that pretty well. So we're going to actually take it off the drawing board and make an actual piece and that piece is going to be the L bracket or L angle with two inch sides. So I nipped off the end in my shear, idea being to get this square so we'll check that. And this square looks kind of junky but I machined off the edges here and it's pretty good so we'll check that and I put a mark in there to indicate this edge is square with this edge so pretty good so that's gonna work out and the drawing calls for a blank of 3.888 inches I don't know whether you can see that or not there we've got our caliper set up so we'll put some scribe lines on here go right over the masking give this a length so the next challenge is to go in the shear and eyeball this and get this as close as possible to 3.888 inches. So let me go over and do that and then we'll come back and see how close we got. This was sheared off. Again, we just did it by eye so there's going to be some inaccuracy. Let's measure it and see what happened. But this measures out at 3.904 so we're off as expected, 3.904. So that brings us over by 16 thousandths. So we're plus 16 thousandths here. So what that means is we're gonna put our bend line right in the middle so we divide this by two and that's gonna be our back gauge setting. And that's gonna mean we're gonna be over by 8 thousandths on this side and eight thousandths on this side. So in a perfect world, if our bend allowance is correct, then we're gonna be looking for two and eight thousandths and two and eight thousandths on this part. So let's go over and bend it and see what happens. Fire up the press brake. Here's our part. Put some marks on here just so we don't get it mix, mixed up. And half this distance is 1.952. So I set my back gauge up. Other videos cover the DRO that I set up on this press brake and how that all works out and how to set it up with your dies, how to figure all this stuff out. So we won't get into that right now. But let's cycle the machine, do a bend. All right. Let's take a look at this bend. It's pretty good. We can hit it one more time. Okay, so that's our bend. We left the masking on this side so we didn't get die marks on the metal. So let's go over and measure this and see what happened. Let's take some measurements. So you can see here, this little square mark indicator was actually put in the press brake so our back gauge was set from this edge where we bent. So let's take a measurement. What we're looking for here was two and eight thousandths on each leg. So let's see what we get here. All right, this is two and sixteen thousandths. So it's, it's eight thousandths over. You can hopefully see that. And then this leg here is two inches. So it's eight thousandths under. This may be okay in some shops. For me, it's unacceptable. There's a 16 thousandths 
difference between these two legs, which it shouldn't be more than 10 thousandths and we can do better with the equipment. So I gotta go back over on the press brake now and take a look at my dies and my back gauge, recalibrate, reset up. Videos have been put out on YouTube covering how to do this, so I'm gonna do that and see if I can find out where this error is and then bend another piece and get a little bit better accuracy. I went ahead and blanked out another piece of scrap metal. I did a little bit better this time. I actually got 3.884. So this piece is four thousandths under the 3.888 target. So that means that we're looking for an outside dimension here of 1.998 on either side. I went ahead, I recalibrated my back gauge against the back of my die. I also took off the masking on the back. That actually does matter. I forgot to do that in the previous piece that I bent, so I'm not sure if that was partially responsible for the accuracy. Let's take some measurements. And this piece went in the back gauge. This edge here hit the back gauge. So let's see what we got. So we've got two and three thousandths, so we're five thousandths good there. And let's take a look at this side. And that's 1.996, so we're two thousandths good there. So I'd call that pretty good. And then we've got 996 and another three thousandths on top of two here. So we got about seven thousandths, six, seven thousandths between these two legs. So that's about as good as it's going to get and it would pass in my shop for meeting the specifications of a drawing or a bent part where this was called out to be two inches by two inches. Again, if I was making 10 or 15 or 20 of these, I would spend a little bit more time setting up the shear so that this total length was consistent. I'd blank out all the pieces and I'd be careful to set up the press brake. But this is about as good as the equipment is gonna deliver and I'm pretty happy with this. So this proves out, so that's it.